lastly, what I would like to share with you in terms of Rhino Bucks, what the ultimate goal is. When I say that we're going to transfer the entire wealth of the top 1% to the rest of the population, I actually mean that. Like, this isn't, uh, oh yeah, Anthony's saying this and he's very populist and this movement and whatever. No, I actually mean that literally. And my background in markets and Wall Street and all these places where I really had a really good understanding of how markets work contributes to it. But it's also a nature nurture argument of behavioral science, behavioral economics, how it all works together. Prices go up when there's more demand than supply, right? Buyers and sellers. Price goes down when there's more sellers than buyers. There's more people selling, not enough people buying. The price goes lower. Okay, we understand that. The most difficult part in owning anything is predicting how many buyers there will be in the future. So on Wall Street, they are really masterful at this. They have their analysts that do their predictions. And this many people are going to want to still buy iPhones a year from now. And if you take that many people times how much the price is, you can equal this much revenue for the company. And if the company's doing that much revenue at this price to earnings multiple with this macroeconomic environment, we believe this will be a fair price. The price today versus that price a year from now, um, we believe you should buy it, right? And that analysis is well-founded enough that people say, oh, that was a, a good analysis. I, I think that makes sense. This looks like a bargain. I'll buy it. Now, all those people come in and buy it. But what happens when it hits the price target? Well, now the upside is, is quite limited. It's, it's already there. You see what people do? It's not that they sell. It's that no new people come in to buy. All of the people that wanted it already bought it. Which means if there's no new people to buy it, what is the marginal behavior? Sell it. The people that are in it say, all right, well, it's not going any higher and it's kind of fairly valued. Um, I think my money could go to other places that have a good opportunity and I'll buy them. So you start selling it. When individuals start selling in absence of any new buyers, what does that equal? Price goes down. Okay. The difficulty is playing that game because you're constantly hostage to who's buying and how do you know new people are buying or when will people stop buying the foundation of rhino is not that the foundation of rhino is subscription buying and the reason we do that is so that we always know what the future buying is we always know what the future buying is and to do so we need to make sure that everyone that's in rhino has enough money to continually buy so our plans are purposely low dollar amounts, 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever the case may be, so that the individual that commits to that uh, plan does not have a real risk to being uh, unable to continue with that plan. In fact, if they're unable to continue, they usually just lower the plan amount. If something really, really bad happens and they have to cancel their plan, okay. But because we structured it in such a way that's so favorable, to an individual being able to stay a part of it because it's a every week plan it just happens it's completely automated it's kind of a dollar amount that most people could commit to say a dollar five dollars whatnot the retention level of rhino is through the roof 86 percent continually buy every single week and what i mean by that is only 14 percent actually even sell anything which means the buying far exceeds the selling now why would that be well, I think a lot of it has to do with what we do every single day. We're, we're, we're accountable. We're here. The numbers are there. Everyone knows where we're going and everyone believes in terms of investment. Well, if you could have one that has a really good uh, mission statement in terms of wanting to do good for people and one that you feel like you're totally in control of and one that you feel that you could see the future before it happens because you see the numbers on there and they have predictive and calculable ability to them that you could see forward. Well, then if you know your money's safe, you're enjoying the time and you're looking to do good, well then why sell, right? The exciting part is when the 1 billion coin is gone. You see, as of right now, there's more buying than selling, right? We just shared that with you. But that buying comes from Rhino, it comes from us. So we're able to go ahead and feed all the buyers because we have the supply, we have the 1 billion. Now, as you saw, Rhino is publicly traded. 
and every part of it's automated. Your account, you never go in and buy Rhino manually. It just it does its thing. It's completely automated. What happens when all one billion coin is gone? Well, the buying has to shift from buying from Rhino to buying from the free market. Like I said, Coin Gecko or any different place, the buying is going to have to happen there. Okay. Well, if there's not, if no one's willing to sell and there's not the sellers available, then what happens? Because the buying is automated. A hundred percent of the buying is going to happen, no matter what. Every single account is going to buy, no matter what. But the selling is manual. You have to actually go into your pockets and sell it. So, how is that even possible? How is, how will all hundred percent of buyers ever be able to get all the coin that they're looking to buy? There's not going to be enough. That's where a particular feature of Rhino comes in. All of the accounts are coded at market price, meaning in a moment where there's not enough supply to feed all the buying, the sellers have the ability to set their own price. Now, if a seller has the ability to set their own price, what do you think the price they're going to set it at? Probably pretty high, which means the buying starts buying at the lowest set price. So it's not like the sellers could all of a sudden put it at a million dollars overnight. Because there'll be more reasonable sellers that are like, oh, I'll, I'll put it at a hundred dollars, and that's what gets bought first. The lowest price gets bought first. But it is true that the sellers will put the price above market price. Well, then what's the price the buyers are going to buy it at? What the price is that the sellers are are going to sell it at? Because you have to entice them. They were they weren't looking to sell to begin with. So what's the next seller going to set the price at? What's the next seller going to set the price at? What's the next seller going to set the price at? When you have a hundred percent automated buying across thousands and hundreds of thousands of accounts, and you do not have the sellers that are willing to sell at the price that that uh, is the market, the price exponentially goes in a virtuous cycle higher. Now, at this point, it becomes a game. Everyone wants to own Rhino. Everyone wants to buy Rhino, not to sell it. But to buy it and to hold it and to see how much higher they could get it. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll run over a hundred bucks. I'll, I'll sell it two hundred a couple of months from now. Who knows? And here's the thing: Rhino can never be bullied by any one person. Remember, the accounts are all purposely low dollar amounts. No one person, no group of people will ever own a large share of Rhino. It's impossible. They can't. Meaning, I know. Allows any person the same opportunity that the people have today. So when the Rhino price is a thousand dollars, the individual could get in at that price, and even if they buy ten dollars worth, because Rhino has eighteen decimal points. You could buy a fraction of a Rhino, right? So at that point in time, anybody could say, "All right, I have a hundred bucks. Let me get into it," and they can hold it, looking to sell it at a higher price. Now, when we say transfer the wealth of the one percent back to the people. Money is finite. There's not an infinite amount of dollars in the world, right? Microsoft is worth ten dollars, and the person that owns Microsoft, like we did with the calculation of Apple, is like, "All right, it's kind of fairly priced. It's not really moving too much." Okay, and then they see something like Rhino, where it's just free money, and they say, "All right, well, nothing until I go on Microsoft. I'm going to sell Microsoft, and I'll take that money. I'll put it into Rhino." What happened? The money that was sitting on Wall Street in a Wall Street company left the Wall Street company. To go to Rhino Bucks. Rhino Bucks is owned by the people. Now you can say, "Well, Anthony, it seems like Wall Street might want to buy Rhino Bucks too." Good, let them. I don't, I don't care. They can never own enough of it to ever make a difference. The plans are purposely low. And if you say, "Well, Ant, it is a free market. They could go in and buy it on the market." <laughs> let them do that. Because when you take a step back and realize that the sellers are setting their own price to begin with, because there's no Rhino to buy. You're going to tell me a Wall Street bank is going to buy a billion of it on the market? Good luck with that. They would set the price so high. Now, you may ask yourself, "Well, Anthony, okay, I, I, I get it. I see what you're doing here." <clears throat> But isn't there a limit to this? Isn't there a top? Like, isn't this going to crash one day? No. Well, it, it, Anthony, you can't be so sure it won't crash. Yeah, I can. I'm absolutely positive because all the buying is subscription buying. Remember, we purposely have low dollar amount accounts so that everyone that is owning and everyone that is buying can stay constant and continue to do so. And in the face of a of a price going higher, I don't think that there's a good reason for the person that's on a five dollar plan to stop buying at a five dollar plan. In fact, they're probably going to raise the ten or fifteen dollar plan. We are never ever going to take anyone's full amount of money. Because if you take everyone's money today, they don't have any money for tomorrow. And when there's no more buyers, 
then there's only sellers. So the entire structure of Rhino is to ensure that there's always buyers. Not only that there's always buyers, that we can calculate, forecast, and predict that there's always buying. In fact, we could tell you the time that the buying is going to happen because it happens exactly seven days from the previous time. Which, if you take a look at our sheet and scroll all the way to the right, so let's do that. Right? So this is total dollar amount. This is total Rhino bucks amount. And of course, if you take this and divide it by the price, you get this. You have the projected selling. It's all right there for you. My point being, there is never going to be a moment in time that we don't know what's around the corner. So let's put it all together. If you know what's around the corner and everyone collectively can see what's around the corner, then that becomes its own self-fulfilling prophecy. Put the behavioral economics in it. If you could actually unite the entire population and show them in a fun, trusting way that everyone's making money and that they're completely in control of making the money, then what happens? Right? Because what's going to end up happening is it's going to multiply so many times that it's going to act like a like a vortex and just suck and crash Wall Street. It will crash Wall Street. And you might say to yourself, well, Ant, at that moment in time, like, you know, they're going to get you. Yeah, they probably will. Like, this will get shut down at some point. Not because it's illegal, but because, all right, for the, for the, for the betterment of the world, you cannot crash every institution. You just can't do it. They stop Rhino Bucks when you have to sell it, right? Like, you get the price it's at. Do I believe Rhino Bucks could go to a million? Yeah. Do I believe it will? I don't know. There's a billion Rhino Bucks. A billion Rhino Bucks times a million equals like a quadrillion dollars. I don't think there's a quadrillion dollars in this on this globe. I do know at two dollars, like, duh, right? Do you think we might have something? I do. And remember, the buying is subscription based. It's automated, meaning any new member of Rhino continues to buy every single week. So whatever the buying is this week, it's going to be more next week because next week is going to be this week's plus all the new people that come on, so forth and so forth and so forth. That buying goes directly into the Rhino Bucks price, which means this scales quickly exponentially. And when you get to the point that you have the billion coin gone, which by the way, when you take a look at the sheet as we get closer to that period of time, any person will be able to look and say, oh my God, the billion coins going to be gone in three months. The billion coins going to be gone in two months. You'll be able to see it before it happens because the sheet calculates everything going forward. So does that build up a, like a, like a countdown clock where everyone's like, oh my God, it's almost there. It's almost, I'm not selling it. Dude. We're, we're almost there because when you get there, it goes like this. So is there an argument to be made that as you get closer to it, things accelerate? Yes. And once you get there, who sells? When everyone knows exactly what's going to happen and the price moves in a way that this 100% automated buying has no people to buy from and the price keeps going higher, who sells? Well, you would sell if you need the money and you would sell to take some profits. Great. When you have hundreds of thousands of accounts, 1% selling is not going to do it. 100% need to buy. So this very thoughtfully because when we get there, we have everything we need to stay there. That's happened. Now it's growing awareness to a point that once we hit a certain point of scale, it just goes. Do I think that could happen over the next six months? Yes. And once we start building out these awareness campaigns and have professional services for this, um, it's going to get quite exciting. And that's in conclusion. Give me the next six months. And uh, I promise you, we're going, to, we're going to change the world. But we're all going to be incredibly wealthy doing it. And we will be remembered for doing something quite great. So, that's where I know. <laughs>